Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a drugstore try on of some new products that I've shown in hauls the past couple of weeks. You guys have been requesting more reviews on all this stuff. So most of this I have not tried before. It's my first time today and one or two of them I think I have tried a handful of times. So I haven't quite formed a solid opinion on them yet. So what I'm going to do today is apply everything um, to get the look that you see right now and then I'll do a wear test and check in later on tonight. So without further ado, why don't we go ahead and get started. Started. All right, so the first product I want to try today is the number seven match made custom blend foundation drops Sorry, I have to read this upside down and I'm keeping this upside down because when I first got this it was right side up And I went to open it and it started pouring out everywhere like a fountain So I've been keeping it this way and hopefully it's not going to do that to me this time But um, I have it in the shade cool ivory and on the back of the box it says to add one drop for light coverage, two for medium, and three for fuller coverage, and that you can mix it with a moisturizer or a primer. And I really love that idea because I feel like then you can just create your own custom foundation that's right for your skin type. A lot of times foundations are too drying on me and this way I can just mix it with something I already know works for my skin and just add a little bit of coverage. So I'm going to mix it with the L'Oreal Magic Perfecting Base, which is my favorite primer. I talk about this one all the time and I think it would be amazing if this primer gave me some coverage. So that's what I'm gonna try to create today in my little Frankenstein makeup lab. So let's go ahead and mix these two together and see if we can create my own perfect foundation. So I just got a little scoop of the primer, which is probably the amount I would normally use. And then I'm just gonna shake these up. I think I'm gonna do two drops. I don't want it to be too light a coverage, but I don't wanna go in too heavy either. And usually with products like this, I use the medium amount, whatever they recommend. So yeah, you can see how dirty this cap is just from where it spilled over everywhere. But luckily it's not coming out like that now. So I would absolutely 100% recommend storing this upside down. So let's go ahead and just apply two drops. And then I'm just gonna mix these together. The drops look dark, but I'm thinking maybe they made this a little darker because they assume that you're gonna be mixing it with something lighter, like a moisturizer or a primer. So that way they're kind of overcompensating for that a little bit. And as I'm blending these two together, it's definitely getting a bit lighter. So that's what it looks like with the primer and the drops blended together. It's a little bit lighter than it was before, but not too much. It still looks a little bit dark, but we'll see how it blends into the skin. All right, so let's start over here on this side of my face. And I'm just applying this with my fingers because it feels just like the primer and I would normally, <clears throat> excuse me, and I would normally apply the primer with my fingers. So that's what we're gonna do. I love how this primer just blurs out my skin and makes it look so airbrushed. So I think it's really cool to have it do that and also add coverage at the same time. So I think with two drops, the coverage is decent. I wouldn't say it's medium. I'd say it's probably more like light medium but I don't know if you can tell the difference from this side to this side, but I feel like this side of my face where I applied it just looks so smooth and like I said, almost airbrushed. So this is awesome. I really love this idea and honestly, I always hoped that one day L'Oreal would come out with a foundation that had this base but with coverage and you know what? I'm just gonna make my own. This is awesome. Another thing that I'm liking about these drops is they don't feel drying on the skin. I have tried other drops from brands like NYX and I found that they had a really like powdery finish to them. So even when I mixed them with something a little more hydrating, my skin still looked and felt really dry, but I don't feel like that's the case with this one. I still have to mix it, I guess, with other things. I definitely want to try mixing it with the Star Skin uh, Pink Cactus Pudding Moisturizer because I think that would make an amazing foundation as well. Um, but so far I'm just loving the effect that this one gives. I think it's just making my skin look so smooth and flawless. So thumbs up for this so far, but we'll see how it wears throughout the day. I'll definitely do a check-in a little bit later. So next for concealer, I'm gonna be using the Burt's Bees Concealer. This is in the shade Fair. I don't know that this is new, but I saw it at Walmart and I hadn't seen it there before, so I just decided to pick it up and try it out. So um, on the website, it says that this is supposed to conceal dark circles, blemishes, and minor imperfections. It's 98.5% natural. Um, it also has nourishing avocado oil and shea butter that blends beautifully and doesn't cake or settle into fine lines or wrinkles. This only comes in three shades, which is a terrible shade range, but I'm hoping that I can make this fair shade work out for me. So let's go ahead and try it out. These days, I don't like to apply a lot of concealer just because um, with the fine lines under my eyes now, I feel like if I apply too much, it just makes everything look extra cakey and just settles right into those lines and kind of makes me look older. 
So as I'm blending this out, it's not really adding much coverage at all. It almost kind of just disappeared right into the skin. So I would say this is a really sheer coverage concealer. It's definitely like, I would say brightening up under my eye area, but it's not hiding a lot. Like I can still see a little bit of the darkness in the corners of my eyes here. So it's definitely not full coverage, but it also doesn't seem to be settling into fine lines, at least not yet. And it doesn't look cakey. It does feel really moisturizing on my skin. So at least that's one good thing. I'm just gonna go around my nose then really quick. Try to get rid of some of this redness because the number seven stuff didn't completely cover. And I'll also have to try that one out as well um, using three drops and see if it starts to get cakey at that point or if it just adds more coverage, which would be amazing. Okay, so yeah, I can still, I don't know if you guys can, but I can definitely still see some redness around my nose and on top of my nose as well. So I'm thinking that this one is just gonna be a pass for me because um, first of all, it was 12 or $13. It's a little bit more on the expensive side for drugstore and there's plenty of other formulas like the one from Joa, the Dark Circle Concealer, the Maybelline Age Rewind or the um, Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define that I like a lot better than this one because those not only brighten up my under eye area but they also hide the dark circles and the redness a lot better. So I think I'm definitely gonna be skipping this one. So then for my cheeks, I'm gonna be going in with one of these elf primer infused blushes this one's in the shade always rosy these are six dollars I got them on the elf website but I have seen them now on the um, Ulta site as well so you can get them there and I'm just gonna use this giant fluffy powder bronzer brush from Milani I've been loving this just for blush lately because it just is so soft and I love the way it blends everything out on my cheeks so I'm liking this color already this is a matte shade as well and these primer infused blushes are supposed to help the blush to last all day and when I was doing my haul video when I first got these I was saying that they kind of remind me a lot of the Bare Minerals Gen Nude blushes and they really do. I think they're so smooth and they have that same kind of like buildable formula where it's not super pigment right out of the gate but it just blends and builds up so nicely on your cheeks and you can just kind of build to however much color you want which I really like. So yeah, I am really, really loving this color a lot. So I'm hoping that it lasts as long as the Gen Nude blushes does on me because that would be amazing. These are so affordable. Um, I just wish they came in more colors. There's only two shades right now, but hopefully they'll come out with more down the line. And then next up, I wanna try an eye look with the new Maybelline Matte Bar Palette. This was around 11 or $12. And the description on the website says, inspired by the streets of New York City, the Matte Bar Eyeshadow Palette by Maybelline features 10 creamy matte shadows for your most sultry and spiced eyeshadow looks yet. So here's what the palette looks like. I don't know if I'm going to have issues trying to get a brush into these pans. They are really, really slim, but I guess we'll have to see. On the back, they actually do list the shade names, so I'll be able to say what shade I'm using. They also show two looks on the back, and I'm wondering if I should just follow one of them because I haven't done an all matte eyeshadow look in such a long time. I usually put some sort of shimmer on the lid, so I'm kind of feeling like I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Hmm. All right, you know what? We're just gonna go ahead and wing it. So I'm gonna start with this cream like ivory shade here called 1915 and I'm just gonna put this all over my lid and then blend it up to the brow bone. And actually this kind of has a slight pink tone to it. It's not a stark white shade, which I'm really happy about. It just has a slight pink undertone, which is great because I feel like it's gonna play well with some of the other colors that I'm gonna use. Next, I'm gonna go in with this pinky shade right here, Empire, and I'm gonna use this one in my crease. And I'm actually just blending this slightly above my crease because I have hooded eyes, so I wanna be able to see it a little bit. So this is normally what I do. I just go into like the socket of my eye and follow that and go back and forth. This was actually really nicely pigmented. I'm surprised. Sometimes Maybelline's eyeshadows are a little hit or miss, but I feel like the last several palettes they've come out with were pretty good. The Lemonade one I thought was okay, the Soda Pop. Um, the City Mini palettes, definitely. I think those are probably some of my favorites from them. Next, I'm just gonna take a smaller crease brush and go into this orange shade called Hustle, and I'm just gonna deepen up the crease and outer corner a little bit with this one. I'm just placing this in the outer corner, and then I'm just gonna drag it across. And I'm also gonna put this down in my lower lash line as well, just to connect the two together. And then last, I'm just gonna take this deeper shade Brick House down here and just apply a little bit of this to my outer corner just to add a little bit of depth to the look. And I'm also gonna just go right underneath my eyes with this one as well. 
All right, so I think I really like working with this palette so far. It was really easy to blend. Um, I feel like the colors are nicely pigmented. I didn't find any patchiness going on. It didn't have a lot of fallout. So definitely liking this one. We'll have to see how, again, it wears throughout the day, but so far so good. For mascara, I'm gonna go in with the Mascara Revolution from Makeup Revolution. I think I've touched on this one a couple of times. I know I talked about it on my Instagram stories and also here in a video, I think, but um, I just wanted to show you how this applies. And you know, I think, I, I think when I was talking about it before, I said I had a love-hate relationship with it because it gives me incredibly big lashes, but it's the clumpiest mascara you have ever tried in your life. Like, it is seriously a struggle to get this not to clump. It's so goopy and it has this big thick fluffy brush and everything just clings to it and it makes such a huge mess um, so a lot of times I just try to wipe off as much as I can on the um, outside of the tube or I'll grab like a tissue and do it just to get at least some of it off which helps but this gives me big lashes like no other mascara I've tried so for that reason I've really really been loving it it also doesn't smudge on me either so it's really long-lasting so I'm gonna show you what this looks like just wait until you see like how big this makes my lashes so quick. I mean like even one coat just gives you so much volume right off the bat. And you do have to be careful with this brush because it's a slightly larger brush so I'm always like poking my inner corner with it. It also has like that hourglass shape so it kind of reminds me of the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. Okay, so you guys see this right now, like this eye to this eye, my lashes look huge. It's almost like a false lash effect, which is so cool um, because I don't wear false lashes, so I'm always looking for a mascara that's gonna give me that effect, and this one does for sure. All right, so as you can see, this just kind of changes the entire eye look. It just makes my lashes so huge, almost like I'm wearing falsies. So I love this stuff and would definitely recommend it, but just go slow with it. Don't add too many coats. You really don't need that many. And also if you need to use like a lash comb or even a disposable mascara wand, if you have some of those, to just kind of comb through your lashes after you're done. Sometimes I do that if it gets a little bit too clumpy, but I didn't have to do it today. And I feel like my lashes are voluminous, but not necessarily like too spidery so if they get that way like I said just comb through them and you'll be fine but I'm really just loving the effect this one gives I don't think there's another mascara that I've tried that gives me lashes this big and then last but not least I'm gonna use this Burt's Bees liquid lipstick that I got recently and this was also at Walmart along with the concealer and I hadn't seen these in store in the past but I know they're not very new because a lot of you guys were recommending these to me a while back so they're semi new I think they came out in 2018 maybe but they just kind of showed up at my stores very recently so um, this one is in the shade Niagara nude and on the website it says that these glide on with intense pigments delivering the perfect amount of color this long wearing formula delivers all day moisture leaving lips looking lush and healthy it's also 100% natural it has apricot it has shea butter it has um, essential fatty acids to help maintain soft happy lips so I am very excited to try this out you guys know I'm not a fan of the matte liquid lipsticks as much so anything that claims to be hydrating I'm all for it all right so this is a really pretty nude shade and it does feel very comfortable on the lips so far so thumbs up for that it does have kind of um, a weird like fruity scent to it. I'm not sure I love it, but I don't hate it. It's not like those perfumey ones that L'Oreal has. I'm not noticing it as much even now than I was applying it. So hopefully the scent doesn't bug me throughout the day, but so far I feel like it looks good. It looks smooth on my lips and I do like this color. I feel like it's a little bit paler than colors I normally wear, but I would say this is probably as pale as I would go with a nude. Otherwise it starts to wash me out a little bit. So anyway, here is the finished look. I'm going to go ahead about the rest of my day and I'll do a check-in a little bit later. Maybe I'll do two check-ins. We'll see how things go and see how this blush is wearing, how the foundation's holding up, the lipstick, the eyeshadow, everything pretty much. So anyway, I'll see you guys back here in a little bit. All right guys, so I'm back. It's been about nine hours and I just wanted to do a check-in and give you guys my final thoughts so first the products that didn't really wear so well first up is the Burt's Bees concealer I feel like I'm seeing some darkness creep back in around my eyes also some redness around my nose pretty much everywhere I put the concealer is wearing away actually it started doing that around maybe like the four to five hour mark um, it didn't crease on me at all but a lot of things don't because I have dry skin so it was a really hydrating formula I think maybe if you're more oily or normal it may crease on you I'm not really sure um, as far as the foundation 
foundation goes, I think it held up pretty well because everywhere else where I put foundation still has some coverage to it. And also with those drops, it's kind of hard to tell because it really depends on what you're mixing it into. That primer specifically has a pretty good wear time on me, so I figured it would hold up well. I've worn that so many times, but I think, like I said, it just depends if you mix it with something a little more greasy, it may not last as long. But I did really, really love those drops, and I think it's just an awesome concept to be able to make your own foundation. I may go with a slightly lighter shade next time just because I felt like that one was a little bit too deep for me, and I think it'll get even deeper if I add a third drop to it, so just something to keep in mind. Um, what else? The blush is still really going strong. I think the claims on that one are definitely true because I can still see it and blush always fades really, really quickly on me. Um, nine hours later for a blush to still be showing up on me at all is pretty darn good because normally they wear off really quickly, especially powder formulas. So I'm really, really liking that. Um, the eyeshadow, I can still see it, but I feel like it's faded quite a bit from when I first applied it. And it also looks just a little bit muddy. I feel like the definition between the color is not as crisp as it was before and everything's just sort of like blending together. And it's also kind of worn away a lot underneath my eyes as well. But the mascara held up great. It hasn't smudged or flaked underneath my eyes at all. So I love this stuff. And then the lipstick. This, while I like the formula and I think it feels comfortable, it didn't last longer than a regular lip gloss on me, even though it has a lot of pigment to it. Um, it was gone after about an hour. After I stopped filming, I went to pick up my son at school, then we came home and had lunch, and by the time I was done eating, it was completely gone. So I do like it, but just keep in mind that if you want something longer lasting than a lip gloss, this is probably not gonna give you that, even though on the website it claimed to be long lasting. The only thing I would say is maybe some of the deeper colors will stain your lips. This one was pretty much the same color as my natural lips, so I couldn't tell really if it had stained at all, but sometimes the deeper colors will so that might make it seem a little bit longer lasting if the darker colors do that but for me it really didn't last long at all so anyway I think that's it you guys so I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below if you've tried any of these products or if you're thinking about trying them I love chatting with you guys and also please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you'll be notified of future videos I do reviews throughout the week and hauls every Sunday so so thank you guys so